Thanks for joining us on Crime Watch. I'm Ivy Kano. Electronic banking fraud is not new in Nigeria, but its impact on those who fall victim isn't one they easily recover from, from ATM fraud to illegal cash withdrawal from bank accounts. Many have been counting their losses at the hands of these scammers who can empty bank accounts just by getting hold of anyone's mobile phone. Godwin Momo, a pensioner of the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria, became a victim recently after losing more than 500,000 unauthorized withdrawal when he lost his mobile phone. There are three groups. This group of seven bought commercial buses and robbed the occupants at gunpoint. The gun is someone that told me to go and do bed. I have the gun, but the, someone said in the jail now. The second group's method of operation is to mount a roadblock and snatch vehicles. They also have branches in two states. For the stick, copper road, like so. So we go. One person go there for front. We go hot touch, and the others go there for back. Some motor go come. So some motor go come. If 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 they they see I say they see I say as if na if na police they 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 go they go get at something like atopa, something like atopa for front. But if they see as if if you don't see the touch, because it's just another atopa. If you don't have saying fast fast enough, you won't much break. Turn with his feet, go back. You like if in a big truck, you go just come, come, come like that. Scatter, scatter those, those things. You, you go pass. So most, most of us sometimes, if we, if we, go, if we go there, if you scatter the, the, those, those things, you go still put them again back. The ones where don't, don't, don't notice for, for front, they go, they, go tell, they go tell others for, for, for back. So they say, no go, no go, no go, then they're there. Thief, 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 thief. Their plan actually is to take the bus from Shagan straight to Diroko, uh, going towards. Um, Proper land to there, but maybe they are called they are contact over there now, so it was not forthcoming. They now divided, divided back to Lagos to send the bus. This third group does not only snatch phones, but their main target is usually the SIM cards. They go ahead, secure an OTP from the bank. An OTP is a one time password, also known as a one time PIN or dynamic password. It is valid for only one login session or transaction on a computer system or other digital device. And then they start withdrawing. And if their victim has the instant loan app installed on their phone, they go further to apply for a loan. The jamming that I used to generate OTP, I forward it to me. I will not forward it to Mustafa. I used to go and do it at my colleague's place because I don't have uh, the access closer because there's a lot of people so. When I get there, they will, they will, at first will give me the account number. I don't even know about Jamie before. I don't know it's Jamie that used to give a face. Mm -hmm. So, at first will give me the account number. Then, we will, we will, they will enter the account number. So, uh, they will ask of OTP. Then I, I will ask our views about the OTP. We, we used to chat on WhatsApp. So, we, used to, we send the OTP to me. Then, when we enter the OTP, it will, it will withdraw the money. It was one of my friends that introduced my shadow friend that introduced me to him that he's looking for a POS man that can help him to do so that's how I know. Okay, so I, I've never seen him before until they apprehended us. Oh, you've never met him? I've never yeah. met him. We only we only do our business online. Online. Then I send their money to them and that's all. This man is a victim and has lost large sums of money withdrawn from his bank account after his phones were stolen. They show me my statement of account or the 16th, 300,088 naira plus was deducted. This is the guy I was told that I found my money. The, the insurance I worked for for five years, they pay me on Wednesday like this, or Thursday I went to market with my wife, the bag and the money left. The money they defrauded was over 700,000. Several right, 11,000 plus. The, the, these guys, my sister, I want to pray for Nigeria police, especially SARS. They are really, if not for them, I don't know what will have happened in the society. God will reward them. They will, in fact. And then the time came when the victim came face to face with the suspect. That, that is my son. He's in Ekpo, my university, reading uh, uh, computer science. Because of this money now that he defrauded me, 
is 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 is, is just hanging. Because that is that is my hope. If he has even collected the phone without going to the bank, it will not pay me. But one defrauded me, even taking low on my neck, one hundred sixty-eight thousand naira. I told him if he doesn't repent, I may restitution. Eight here is hot, but air fire will be hotter for you. You need to repent, madam. What I need from him, he should. He, I should just recover that money. That is all. Whatever the law want to take on him is left for go, for, uh, to, for government or police. It's true. I'm going to return the money. In this era of technology-driven banking, such is possible even in police custody. Let's hope that the suspect fulfills his promise of refunding over 700,000 illegally withdrawn from this victim's account. There are ending cases of killing by unknown gunmen in some communities in Plateau State has remained a source of sleepless nights for governments and security operatives in recent times. Just about 40 kilometers away from the spot where the paramount ruler of Barakin Ladi was killed by unknown gunmen who invaded the community last week, another tragedy struck on the plateau. This time, five locals were killed at a leisure spot in Kevum community in just south local council as the investigation is underway to unmask the faces behind the heinous crime residents of the community are on the street demanding justice for the killing of their loved ones it's yet another sad morning here in Kevom community of just south local government area of plateau state where some yet to be identified gunmen attacked the community midnight of thursday leaving five people dead with one person badly injured. These youths and women are out on the street in an angry mood to demand justice following midnight murder of their loved ones. They have blocked the main road leading to the area, burning tires to express their dissatisfaction at the invasion of their community by gunmen. The five victims killed were said to have been sitting at a popular community leisure center when the attackers invaded the area and shot them. It was around yesterday, around 10, 30 something, I was called that uh, there was gunshot. So I went out, the police also called me that uh, there are corpses on the ground. I went there, what I saw immediately that time was four corpses. Total five corpses, five deaths and one casualty. Leaders of the community say their security is no longer guaranteed with the nature and frequency of attacks witnessed in their area in recent times. This is not the first time this particular area has been attacked. There was a time that a police officer was killed around this place. There was a time that a civil defense was killed around this place. So as leaders, you can see we are here with the traditional leaders, the members of our House of Assembly, and the, uh, the youth leaders are all here to see that we come the situation down. No, no. We are going to ensure that we follow these things and ensure that justice is done to our people. The Plato State Police Commissioner, whose quick response was applauded by the locals, also spoke to journalists on the situation. We are after the perpetrators, after the sponsors. This will not be another incident where the perpetrators will go scot-free. That's the assurance I want to give to you. Residents of Kuruvom are urged not to take laws into their own hands, but to support law enforcement agencies with useful information that will lead to the arrest of perpetrators of the attack. Mixed reactions continue to trail the alleged molestation of four staff of a popular hotel in Eforum, Delta State, for collecting tips from a guest. Now, one of the victims had gone on social media to narrate how they were stripped at gunpoint and forcefully made to withdraw some cash at ATM point. The police has now declared full investigation into the case. The victim's lawyer and civil rights activists say the perpetrators must be brought to book irrespective of their standing in the society. Earlier this week, the social media was awash with the story of four staff of this hotel in the front Uwe Council area of Delta State who were stripped for collecting tips from a guest. 
one of the victims tearfully narrates the story after being compelled to make a refund by means of deduction from her accounts. I was summoned to my, into my bros in my Shema's office in Kenneth Igbagi. It was like, uh, I should come and explain myself that a, tra a certain transaction happened on the 8th. I should come and explain myself. I told him that the only thing I could remember is one particular client that came that wasn't with his ATM card that he wanted to pay into our account and we obliged and he, at the end he gave us 20,000 tips which we shared among ourselves between me, Gloria and Gift. And he said as long as we are working for him, any tip that was being given to us belonged to the company. He collected my ATM card on gunpoint and ordered his account officer, Mr. Sources, to make a withdrawal of 5,000 from our account. He withdrew 161,000 from our account. We drew 111,000 from the account of Mr. Victor Ephraim and stripped us naked on gunpoint. They took us to Ebrumede police station and we stayed in the police station since on Friday on the 18th to on the 21st where he charged us to court. Answer to the alleged victims of the molestation expresses commitment to pursuing the matter until justice is served. This happens to be its usual practice. He hardly pays salaries and in terms of human rights violation, you know, the punity is much. So, certainly, the victims will get justice. There's no doubt about that. No matter how big the person is, no matter how worthy he is, the law is above every person. And we will ensure God li we live in, and by the grace of God, that these four victims, they get justice. The Delta State Police Command will welcome useful information from the public concerning the matter. Anybody who has information that will aid in our investigation, such person or group of people are welcome. Nobody has right to strip anybody naked because doing so is an encroachment into the fundamental rights of others. Whether that incident occurred uh, as a result of what happened in that hotel or not, it is investigation that will prove that. The four staff of the hotel say they are undeterred in their quest for justice despite receiving threat messages in their phones. When we come back, do you know that your bank account can be emptied when your mobile phone gets into the hands of criminals who specialize in hacking phone SIM cards? If you haven't experienced SIM card fraud, then count yourself lucky. It's a relatively new, sophisticated form of fraud that allows hackers to gain access to a bank account, credit card numbers, and other personal data. It's tough to spot and even tougher to undo the resulting damage. Many bank accounts have been drained by scammers who hack mobile phone SIM cards and generate one-time password to carry out unauthorized cash withdrawals. One victim narrates his experience. Take a listen. Hoodlum just slammed my boots, my trunk, and I had to park. As I was just coming down, at the gunpoint, the, the guy just, you know, collect my phone from me, and he went on bike. There were like four. The two bikes now had to move. Because my, my ignition was on, there could be no way I could just turn and start running after them. So I, just, so I decided to just leave the phone and let them go. At the end of the day, um, I shot my SIM on Saturday and um, I discovered that the new phone I got when I downloaded the application, my bank application, uh, I discovered they took money from my account. So I had to rush to the bank. Getting to uh, my f the first bank, I discovered they, they have started withdrawing my money since that Friday night. And uh, they took huge amount of money from that account with the other bank, mm. which I have a token on, which I believe they are not supposed to, mm. you know, withdraw money from. Getting there, I discovered they bought things online. Mm. At the end of the day, I discovered they took a lot of money from there. Then next thing, I had to just call a police officer that I know, and I said, okay, he's going to give me a contact. So I rushed down here. And um, I made my complaint. At the end of the day, they said I should not bother myself. I just give them all the necessary things they needed. <laughs> to my surprise, I never knew. 
police will walk up to this extent. The end of the day, they called me, the guy is here, and I got here. 24 years old guy. Hmm. Oh, God. Well, let me just say, I, will, I must commend the police, especially the SARS, they are really working. I, honestly, I'm surprised. Okay. I'm surprised. I also had a chat with an IT consultant at Deni Ujikitu on rising electronic banking fraud in Nigeria. He gave some insight on how we can safeguard our online exposure and bank transactions. Let me list some of the scams that are prevalent. Number one, fake alerts. That fake alert, the way it works is they will come to a car shop, for instance, or a high gadget store where they sell phones or computers or anything that is movable. And they will say that we want to buy a car. When they enter the car lot, the owner of the car lot will probably give them the account number. They will do a transfer. And that transfer, if the person has 1 million, for instance, they are buying a car of 1.5. The, the car owner, the car, slot, the car lot owner knows that they don't have access or probably they might not have access to his own balance. So and if the car is 1.5, they will do the transfer to the person and the person will say balance of 2.5. That alone would convince the owner that, okay, he had 1 million in his account. Somebody has just bought a car of 1.5. They have transferred 1.5, making 2.5. And they will get the, to the zero digits in cover. So the person will automatically believe that that was a genuine one. Number two is they, these days, either rob people at gunpoint. When they rob people at gunpoint, automatically, most people do not password their phones. They do not password their apps. And before you know it, they will get to the app. They will begin to use your, you know, your phone to make others do transfer on your account and your account is gone. That's number two, you know, prevailing scam. Number three is you do not even, they don't even have access to your phone. They don't have access to your um, account. But you just discover that your money is reducing. <laughs> For fake alerts is we should make sure that every transaction anybody comes to your store there is a local technology for it and we have exchanged this with a lot of you know businesses and they are getting it right and they are using it to save a lot number one the most important thing is get an application get a bank application Apart from getting a bank alert, apart from getting an email alert, they can easily get your email alert, they can easily get your GSM number to send you through all these um, hacking apps that we've said. Now, the reason why the banks upload and say they, okay, upgrade your soft, your application, you know, is basically to put in new security. So we should try as much as possible to upgrade the applications that's number one. And when we want to upgrade or you want to check a review or you want to download, you should make sure that it has a, every bank has a volume of customers, millions of customers. So you cannot see uh, a bank app, for instance, that has maybe 200 persons that have you know, visited or seen. You know that that's not real. That's number one. Number two is that on that application, when you have a backup, when you have, apart from the email, you know, alerts, apart from the GSM, uh, GSM alert, you have a bank app. That banking app would give you automatic, automatic access to your own account. So there is no way they can have access to hack your own bank application. You don't want to use the bank application to do anything, rather than to check the, the genuineness of that bank transaction before you release your own goods to them as a merchant. That's one. Two is that you should use a local intelligence whereby somebody is coming to you evening in the evening 
or when you want to close and say, ah, we want to buy something of two million, three million, we want to buy a car. Don't mind the way they dress. Come on. They look big. They have big pictures. They will package it well. Bring bigger cars than, you know, you expect. They look fresh. So don't use all those as parameters to judge who to release your own product to. What you should do is that the moment they come around and say, okay, at odd hours, when they know you close for six, in either the mall or the market or wherever you do business, and they come 5.30 and, you know, they will be saying we want, you know, volume of business. No business person will hear those volumes and will not want to. So what you should do is that while they are doing that, you should take their pictures. Take pictures. That's the local intelligence. Take the pictures. For, for, even if your salespeople are there, even if you are the CEO and you are not in the business, tell your sales, you know, people that take pictures of whoever is saying, release products to me, we are sending an alert and you don't know him from anywhere. Now let's bring you other crime news making headlines. This event also marks the 20th anniversary of the establishment of the anti-corruption agency, the ICPC, and launches the National Ethics and Integrity Policy. The policy was put together by the ICPC in collaboration with the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation and the National Orientation Agency. President Muhammadu Buhari is a firm believer in integrity in public office and fighting corruption as can be seen from his antecedents as a military head of state. He believes progress can only be achieved in the delivery of dividends for the citizenry when the three arms of government work together. I believe that it is when the three arms and the three levels of government work together that government will be enabled to serve the country. We will also see the positive impact of our efforts reaching all the sundry, all and sundry across the country. The ICPC is the beautiful bride on this occasion and has actively pursued the war against corruption, as can be seen from recent achievements. Among such is the recent discovery that funds to the tune of 2.67 billion naira made to some federal colleges for school feeding during lockdown ended up in personal accounts. The Commission also discovered that a number of projects described as ongoing in the budget were found to be new projects that ought to have been excluded in order to enable government complete existing projects. A number of the projects that were described as ongoing were actually found out to be new projects that ought to have been excluded in order to enable government complete existing projects as planned. We found, sir, the absence of synergy between outgoing project sponsors and their successors. The President of the Senate is quick to lend his support for this new policy launch and dismisses the notion that the present administration's fight against corruption has been selected. Rather, he stresses the need for all organs of government to work together to facilitate the treatment of corruption cases with dispatch to enhance the war on the menace. If a case of a corrupt practice or alleged uh, corrupt practice will last four, five, six, ten years or so, you know that something is wrong and, and that is giving some kind of support, tacit, uh, to the corrupt practices. But if there is always um, uh, dispatch in the treatment of such cases, that will expedite uh, action by the judiciary and, and to give uh, support to, to, to the fight against corruption. The take home from this event is that there is need for citizens now more than ever to join in the fight against corruption. There is also need for citizens to embrace traditional societal values that build trust and integrity. If Nigeria must progress as one united entity. And that's our program today. Thanks for watching. You can send in eyewitness pictures and videos to our email address and social media handles. It's coming up on your screen now on my V channel. I'll be back next time.